Now, around two-thirds of over 65s are missing out on the advantages of going online. Research shows it's because they think it's too complicated, too expensive or irrelevant. So two guests on this, certainly an, an elderly surfer, Gillian, <laughs> and um, our tech expert, so Julia good. Hardy. I'm can can so... you reach him from there? Yeah, where God, you don't exactly. I know where he lives. So, <laughs> only kidding, really. But look, Julia, silver surfers, Yes. I mean, they are there. Why are some people in that bracket really good at getting online and other people, and I can think of a few that I know, just seem to struggle getting their head around tech? Obviously, you know, we've grown up with technology. It just seems part and parcel of everything that we do. And I think it just comes down to if you have like a kind of passion for life. So my dad, he's 73. He's actually an electronics engineer, but he's surprisingly not terribly good with tech. Right. Oddly. Right. But he really does try. He does try to kind of have a go and go. And I think if you just are one of those people that wants to try new things, I also think as well, it's, it's kind of got to the point where it's so saturated in terms of, you know, if you come outside your house, you go and wait at a bus stop. I know you don't, obviously, Stephen. <laughs> you go and wait at a bus stop. Every single person is on their phone. You know, you go on a train, everyone's well, on their phone. Well, you can't avoid it. Also, I did have to catch a bus, uh, I think it was yesterday. <gasps> was it yes, believe it or not. <laughs> um, and now, to find out when the bus is coming, you yep, can send a text app. and see. So you really do need to be I up with it. I remember being, like, going to school and having to wait forever for buses. Yeah. Like kids today don't really have to wait for no. anything. It's all, it's all immediate. But there's an issue, isn't there? That they say, We're growing up with this sort of thing and it seems intuitive to us, but we're, we're getting used to how it's all evolving so we can, you know, do whatever we like on these. For, for someone who's missed that, and I'm yep. thinking relatives of mine who sort of, they've got that gap in their knowledge, so this actually isn't intuitive to them. How do they start to get their head around it? <laughs> For every single person, the first time you use uh, an interface on a, a bit of tech, it's frustrating because you know what you want to do, but you don't know how to do it. You have to just play. You just have to play with tech and get used to it. And then once you start doing it, it seems very, very intuitive. Oh, I swipe this way, I pinch like this. And the more you use tech, the more your, um, you know, your knowledge of how everything works and the more you can pick up a different piece of technology, but you have to kind of get over that first hurdle and you should encourage people to do that, to have a go. But what about, so it's one thing getting your head round the tech and starting with that what about using the tech to help you and uh, things like your know, memory training and, and those okay. sort of things so um, I was thinking about this uh, all week about sort of some of the stuff that would be particular for kind of silver surface I think one of the biggest things for my parents is that they always hello hello hi <laughs> Nick's joining hello, us hello how are we no, how are sorry. you I'm never better good um, one of the things my parents have real difficulties doing is um, remembering passwords right I get phone calls from my dad what's my password what's my password I don't know what your password is. They have um, apps now. Um, there are so, so many of them. I don't want to go through all of them, but where you can basically put in all your different passwords, um, also all your logins for different websites, things like that. Some of them will actually create unique, really odd, you know, QXP, WYZ passwords for you yeah. and it stores them all in there and you basically can then just access them with one thing and then you can get into it which is good because every single website now you have to have a login for this and yeah. a password for that and it's and also you have to update them like every oh, six weeks it's so, so boring yeah it's, it gets a bit a little bit annoying but that's one of the really good ones obviously um there are numerous uh, and infinite studies about how using kind of cognitive memory games mm. helps older people sort of keep their their brain function going and there's so many of these apps out here and they're very very cheap uh, and what what about because there's always an issue with with old people who are find themselves on their own a bit isolated what about the idea of using things like FaceTime or Skype and social networking absolutely. to actually stay in touch absolutely you know I mean a lot of parents you know maybe their children have moved overseas abroad and it is that feeling of you know loneliness where they you know you do have this technology but you do feel a bit isolated but there's nothing like having a face-to-face -face conversation and, and Skype actually is the best thing you're gonna or, or other apps as well obviously yeah. is looking at someone's face and seeing it is you know even on the phone it's a good connection but seeing someone's face it makes you feel you know it's, it's your family it sort of makes you feel okay and happy you don't feel so lonely so if you're a bit challenged by the tech and you're in that age whatever age bracket you're in actually who are you there um, Give it a go, seems to be the answer with all yes. of this. <laughs> just try. Just try. There you go. Love it. And I'm for that. And Julie is quite right. Just play till you understand it. It does all fall. It's a bit like learning to drive. You can't, you can't, you can't basically ruin anything. Don't no. be afraid <laughs> to touch buttons and just figure out what things do. Have so. a